Hey chess friends, National Master James K. III here with chess.com and today we have game of the day. With the white pieces we have Stockfish and with the black pieces we have Leela Chess Zero. Let's get right into it. Let's see what we have here and there's d4 from Stockfish and Knight of 6 Knight of 3 and g6. So maybe a King's Indian, maybe a Grunfeld, something like that. Then you see g3, which these systems are very, very confusing sometimes, especially because you don't know when they're going to play c4. Are they going to play c4? Are they going to double fin Keto? There's so many things that can happen here in these positions, but the main move that you usually play here is if you're going to play g6, you should follow up with bishop g7. After bishop g7, same thing. If you play g3, you should probably follow up with bishop g2. Very easy. And then here we have d5, right, which is actually some type of Grunfeld in a way. Of course, c4 hasn't been played yet, but after castles, castles, and c4, c6, this is now by transposition into the Finchetto variation of the Grunfeld. These are actually the, the very nicer lines, or of course, uh, they, there's a reputation of being boring from having the c6 lines, especially after these next moves. Takes, takes, we have kind of a dry position. It's symmetrical, and in symmetrical positions, the stuff's really dry, and it's going to take a long time. Hence, this game actually went uh 69 moves so a lot of moves to go through today after knight e5 there's knight to e4 this is all theory by the way this all can happen you also have a knight c6 option option you have a knight to g4 and bishop f5 knight to e4 still symmetrical and knight to c3 i can break symmetry right now by playing knight takes c3 or i can play Bishop f5. It defends the e4 knight, which is pretty cool. It develops at the same time, opens up rook for the um, the, the file for uh, the rook to go to c8. After bishop f4, really boring, symmetrical, super boring engines, engines playing too, says it's zeros right now. Now, of course, as a human here, there's a lot of play left. And after this move, knight takes c3, it is now not symmetrical anymore. So there's a lot you can do here. I can now bully this pawn. Or I could play knight c6 and make it more symmetrical if knight takes c6. Oh, wow. Right. Now, of course, this did not happen. Knight takes c6 will be 100% symmetrical. You can probably see this maybe ending in a draw or something like that. Not, not lots of play. But after queen to b3 makes things very interesting. Hitting b7, which is a weak point, right? Something like rook b8, it will be an error immediately after uh, stuff like knight takes c6 here. Bishop takes b8. This is a very scary position here already. Um, but b7 is hanging you need to do it do something about it queen d7 doesn't work so how do you defend the pawn can you play b6 well b6 is actually going to be answered by easily knight takes c6 so it is black to move what do you do in this position here's the move here in fact we're going to defend it by not defending it at all e6 wow e6 from lila chess zero says take it i dare you Stockfish says, okay, show me what you got. Queen takes b7 after knight takes c5 here. So now we have a doubled pawn. Rather, you take with the pawn or the bishop. If pawn takes, you have a very cool move here. Very hard to spot as well, especially as a human, is g5, right? g5 not only gives you some air for the bishop to tuck on g6, but when the bishop moves, we can now take on e5 with a dynamic position. Weak pawn, right? And there's not a lot over here. In fact, let's make a move like bishop to e3. Bishop takes e5 with c3 hanging. This is defended by the queen. I can bring the bishop back, and I'm actually holding everything together. Pretty nice. After queen takes b7, knight takes, and stockfish toes, bishop takes e5. After bishop takes e5, captures and captures. Now we have the double pawns here. But black is down a pawn. Black is still down a pawn, but it's doubled, and there's weaknesses here. Saying, yes, I'm down a pawn, but eventually I'm going to get it back. And I'm going to have so much pressure on your position that I'm going to get it back. You'll see that a lot in like the Banco Gambit. That's a very, very nice opening. Very advanced, but it does give up a pawn just to have so much play and activity of the pieces, even being down a pawn with the potential to get it back due to white having so many weaknesses here. Four weak pawns. Now we maybe just say three because this one can be defended, but uh, there are technically four weak pawns right now. After D takes E5, Queen A5 from Lila Chess Zero. Attacking c3 and getting the queen on a very nice, honestly, diagonal file. Like it's just great to be on a5. And then c4 from Stockfish. But let's say something like rook f to c1. This is more of a natural move. c4 is like, wow, that's really hard to find or even consider. Rook f to c1 is a very, very logical move defending the pawn. Why do we use the f rook? Because a2 is hanging. And if you want to keep our pawn, we're going to use the f rook. Rook f to c1, rook a to b8. Hitting the queen, queen e7, and the queen is almost trapped, but it's not trapped. Like, it's totally fine. After queen e7, there's rook after c8, attacking c3, 
Uh, and queen can go to d6. Reason for this is actually um, tying the rook down. So rook takes c3 will not work at all. So rook to b2. But I'm still down a pawn. And we're going to stop it right here and we're going to get back to the game. But I'm still down a pawn. And there's so much activity for black, right? Rook takes a2, rook takes e2, rook takes c3. I can always usually get away from some of these checks. Now there is some type of perpetual if the queen is um, gets does dislodged from a5. So you do want to be careful um, of such a, such a thing. But with that being said, there's a lot of play here. Instead, uh, c4 was played. So c4 was the move instead of rook after c1, going for some dynamic counterplay. And you can also almost, it's hard to do, but it's almost considering queen takes a8 as a human here. But this is uh, this is uh, going to queen probably. Queen takes a8, and rook takes, and then bishop takes. And you have two rooks for the queen and a bishop, but this this is, if this pawn wasn't here, this would probably be okay for white. Um, c4, rook a to b8, queen e7, and d takes c4. So we got our pawn back and now it's passed. Wow, look at that. Out of all of this work, we finally have something here. Gave a pawn back, gave a pawn up, got it back, and with interest. Queen to h4, trying to keep an eye on the pawn. And then instead uh, of actually playing rook f to c8, there was actually a very cool move, actually. Let's see if you can find it here. Black to move, what would you do? All right, here we go, guys. Hope you're ready for this. After queen h4, after the queen h4 move, you would think you would just play rook f to c8. Pass pawns must be pushed, but in fact, you're actually running right into e4. That was the whole intention of queen h4 because there's no bishop g4 anymore. But now you can play g5, and after it takes, there's bishop g6. And this is this is cool and all, but this is not what we actually wanted. So in fact, what Leela Chess shows here was bishop c2. Very cool move. Getting out of the way, putting the bishop um, outside of basically this whole kind of e4, f4, g4 trap, and I don't have to worry about anything anymore. So queen takes c4. Okay, cool. You get your pawn back. We attack your queen, queen d4, and then rook b5, uh, hitting the pawn. Now watch how many threats there's going to be in a row here. f4, rook b4, hit the queen. Queen e3, okay, cool. Rook a4, hit the a2 pawn. Rook f to c1, cool. Rook c3, attack the queen. Queen d2, what do you do? What, what would you do here? What would you do here? After queen d2, there's actually queen uh, queen to c5 here. Another threat. King f1. And for your next threat, come on. You got it. You can find it. Rook d4. Another threat. Queen e1. And then no more threats. <laughs> h5. We did a lot of threats in a row to get to this position right here. There's still about 40 moves left from here. A lot of moves. But with that being said, we did get a pretty nice position going on. H5. Yes, I'm down the pawn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pawns. Right? So we have 5 pawns versus 6 pawns. But the position is so much better for black here. Now, the engines give it zeros. But as a human, you can't move anything. It says white here. The king can't even go here. Like This is just a scary position. I'll happily give you your pawn back if we can just change this position around, says white. After h5, queen to f2, maybe putting a little bit of pressure on d4, a5. Didn't really matter. It's like, okay, now watch how just black is going to just slowly squeeze this position. Now we're going to fast forward uh, eventually here because there's so many moves that we're just kind of like shuffling, improving the position that, of course, uh, we have to fly through some of these moves. So after a5, king to g1. Queen b4 just getting off with a nasty little pin. Also, e3 was kind of annoying here, but we still could play uh, rook c4. a3, queen to c4, a lot of shuffling. Bishop f1, threatening, obviously, here. So we back up. Rook to d8. a4, king g7. And then queen e1. So kind of just a lot of shuffling here. Watch these moves. There's a check. Queen f2. We don't want to trade because trading is definitely going to help white. So queen to b4. Queen back to e1, rook d to c8. And now watch the shuffle. Bishop h3. And then h4 was a very nice move here from black, attacking g3, also opening the h file. So h4. And if you take queen takes f4, this is just really bad. You don't want to take that pawn. Bishop goes back to g2. Rick a to c4. Or 8 to c4. Bishop a8. What a move. <laughs> Bishop a8. h3 and king f1. And now this is really a grind. Really a grind here. And you'll see sometimes, especially watching grandmasters play or engines, they just shuffle, but in a way, it's a smart shuffle. Sometimes it's seeing what you want, what you want to do next. And the hardest thing sometimes in chess is figuring out how to wait and do nothing in a very good way. So actually from here, after king f1, rook to c8. It hits the bishop. Bishop goes back. We go back to c5. Instead, we were on c4 before. Rook to a2. It's a move. It doesn't really attack anything, but it's just getting off the back rank. White has to make a move. 
Queen to d4, just centralizing the queen. Maybe there's something we can do, waiting for white to make some type of mistake. Now, right now it is minus two, but in, in just standards here, a lot of times it's actually like it fluctuates as many moves as they make. Rook a to a1, and then a bishop to e4. And after bishop e4, rook d1, queen c4, right? Going back here, in fact, the, the fatal mistake was actually rook a2. Here it's still like minus 0.7. And then actually after rook to c4, or actually after, um, yeah, here, bishop h1. Bishop h1, rook here, and rook a2. This is where it really got bad. But the position's already bad. If you just look at this as a human, right? Flip the board if you like to. This is very bad as a human trying to figure out what to do here. I don't have any play. I'm just shuffling pieces. Queen d4, rook a to a1, and bishop e4. Now it's time to trade. If queen takes, I have decisive results here. Rook takes c1 is also a thing as well. Rook to d1, stepping out of the way, and queen back to c4, keeping the threat alive and defending. King f2. And then this cool move here from black, let's see if you can find it here, actually. This is a very instructive moment. It's time to push forward. How do you do it? Here it is. Black plays this move. Very nice. G5. And we lie. Break it up. Break it up. Make some weaknesses. Now, of course, you shouldn't take. So, of course, we don't take. And queen F1. And taking here, you will actually open up some space for, for white. We don't actually want this to happen. So, after G5, there was G4. Close it down. Boa Constrictor, Karpov style. You can't move anything. So after g4, bishop takes e4, finally. Queen takes and rook a2. So at least I feel a little bit looser, says white, but I can't do anything still. Rook to d5, I'm definitely willing to trade because my pieces are much better. Rook a to a1, again, is just miserable for white. Rook to d4 and f5. This f5 move was very, very strange here, but what, I mean, what else do you do? Maybe just king g1? King e1, in fact, everything right here is minus 6. Everything it's minus six, guys. So it's a really rough position, but stockfish toes at five. Okay, trying to free up whatever. We could take here. You can do rook takes d1. You can do queen takes e5. You can do anything you want here. E takes f5 was the choice from Lila Chess Zero. And after this move, e6 is just trying to open up some lines, maybe move the rooks and try to get to the a file just to do something because we need to do something. After this e6 move, there was an interesting move here. Instead of just capturing, which most people would do to just deal with that, get done. With it, of course, this is an engine. Rook to b4, which is the best move. Very strong move. Rook to b4 and rook a2. After rook a2, queen takes e6. And this move was about taking on e6. Taking on e6 with the queen. Now, here, the rook is absolutely hanging. The rook is hanging right now. This position is so bad, minus 8, if you want to be exact here. It's, a, it's such a bad position that, you know, as a human, you're going to move the rook. But the engine says that Stockfish says that this is so bad. That I'm just going to give up the rook. That's just pretty tough. Now, as a human, I'll show you a human line. Something like move the rook, right? But it doesn't really matter. In fact, it goes up minus 10. It was actually less if you give it the rook, which is insane, right? But after rook a to d2, f4 happens. And then, of course, I'm threatening, uh, of course, pawn takes g3. If, if king to e1, and then you have f3, and which is, which is just brutal. Just f3, everything. I mean, you, you can't ever survive this. You can't survive this. And of course, if pawn takes f4, then we have rook takes f4, which is pretty simple there. You also have um, h takes g3 if king to e1. You could play h takes g3 as well, which is another move. I mean, f takes g3. Everything wins. Everything wins, literally. So after king to g1 here, <laughs> instead of taking the rook, this is just insane. Leela Chess did not even want to take the rook. This is just high-level play from an engine, especially from a, a human standpoint. This is just a free rook. We're going to take the rook every time. And definitely, even in a slow push game. But after f4, it's like, wow, highlighting the fact that your position is so bad, I don't even want you rook. You can have it. After uh, f4 here, there's queen to e1 shuffling. So, hey, you're not going to take it. Hopefully, you take it now and not today. Pretty easy. More pressure. f3, pawn takes, queen takes a2. What else do you want here? After king to f1, okay, I'll take the rook now. Thanks for the, uh, the generosity. Queen takes a2 and queen to d2. Queen to d2 was a really good move, just, of course, uh, trying to trade, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> good move. Yeah, right. Yeah, everything's losing. But as a human here, of course, you can you can play on. This game's completely over, especially after we trade queens and the rooks are doing well. Queen to d2, queen e6, stepping out of the way. Now, let's just fast forward through the moves here. This one's over. So we're, it's, it's always a matter of style and how you want to do it here. But we're just going to show you the rest of the game here. This game is completely over. Great boa constrictor. You can't move anything. I won't even take your rook over there because my position is so good type of game. After queen e6, queen d8, 
Ricky five, right? We're just shuffling. I mean, literally, you could take this, guys. You could just take this. <laughs> Leela Chess, like, ah, oh, it's faster to go queen f5. Queen d3, uh, avoiding the trade when you are, I mean, this is insane. It's, it's hilarious, actually, because usually you trade when you're up, not when you're down. Don't even think twice about it in many cases, taking on g3. But Leela Chess zero says this, this is the best way. Queen f6, take on f4. Rook takes f4, king e1. You have rook checks, you have everything. Rook e6, uh, opening up the diagonal. Rook d4, queen f5, rook c1, queen d5, queen f2, and rook d2. Everything's winning. Queen f1, queen d3, queen takes f7. This is over, right? This has been over, but okay. Queen takes f7. King takes rook check, king f6, and this is the rest of the game. King f2, the checkmate ended like this. After rook takes e2, king to g1, and the finale... Which checkmate do you want? You just choose one. Queen b1 was Lila Chess Zero's uh, checkmate there, but this was pretty cool, pretty uh, uh, dynamic game to say the least, especially out of something that was so boring, like a Neil Grunfeld that was actually uh, symmetrical in the Finchetto variation. Pretty cool stuff from Lila Chess Zero. Showed us the bold constrictor style, taking your page out of Karpov's book there. Pretty cool, guys. Hope you enjoyed this game. I'm National Master James Canty III here with Chess.com, and I'll see you guys on the next video.